Okay, today we're going to be talking about the Salesforce flow assignment element. And this is actually the fourth video that we've done on the logic section of the flows, um, which is sweet. So we've kind of surpassed that. We'll move on, obviously, after this video uh, to another part of the flow that we can get into. So if you have watched these before, just as a reminder, um, everything that we do post is going to be back over here on my blog site. Uh, you can check it out here. There's stuff on Salesforce. Uh, there's stuff on business applications like Slack and Zapier and other things that we come across. Uh, we have a podcast. The podcast focuses in on frequently asked questions around Salesforce that we try to put a new episode out each week. Uh, we also have a section for unfiltered thoughts, um, more or less just a place that you can go and check out um, just some thoughts that we have around like trying to progress your career and things like that. So feel free to jump over here. And the best part about these videos is that I try to post a blog post for each and every one of them. So uh, one of two things, you can either jump in here if you'd rather read the information than listen to it and watch it. And it will have you know all the documentation that we talked about, screenshots, so it's super easy to follow along with. And then the video obviously to the YouTube video we're recording right now at the end. Um, it's also super helpful in those uh, moments where you've watched the video and you just want to jump back over here and look at the documentation. Uh, you can go ahead and do that, obviously, right now. So uh, if that's more you and you'd rather just read this, feel free to jump over to this site and you should be able to just find Salesforce Flow um, assignment. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the actual video of breaking this down, getting over to our test account, and then showing how this flow is actually going to work. So I grabbed two different definitions. This first one that we have here to kind of set the foundation of what an assignment is and what it does, this one is from Salesforce itself. And it's helpful if you have some understanding of flows and some understanding of how an assignment element works. Um, but in my personal opinion, like reading this, if I had zero context of how flows work or what an assignment was, or I'm brand new to flows, this doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. So I wanted to grab just like a normal definition for the word assignment, because I think that plays in better to actually what this thing is going to be doing. So Salesforce is basically letting us know that it's going to set values in some type of variable. We have a variable, collection variable, record variable, all these different variables, right? Where it's setting some type of value. It's going to set a value inside of that variable to be stored. And like I said, if you have some understanding, maybe that makes sense to you. If you don't though, I think the if you break down the word assignment and just try to think of like, what does it mean to have an assignment? Or what does it mean when someone gives you an assignment? It typically means to, kind of what they're saying here, right? Like produce something, like add value to something, right? If a teacher in school gives you an assignment, it's to complete that work, right? And that's more or less what this assignment is doing. It's assigning or um, setting a value to something. Um, so that's what we're gonna kind of break down. And when I show you, I think that will make more sense with these two definitions of how it works if you don't know what these are yet. So what we want to do, um, I'm going to show you a couple of the fields first before we actually break down the criteria this time, just so that you kind of know where we're headed with this one. If we jump over to our test account, we're going to be working on the account. And on the account, we're going to be focused on two fields, the favorite movie field and the year released field. And what we want to do is we want to allow someone like myself to be able to update the favorite movie for this account and the year that that movie was released. So one of two things, right? Like I want to be able to um, input this with whatever that is and then the year, save it. Okay, now that this account has a favorite movie and the year it was released, if I ever want to update this, I want to be able to view what information is already here on the account. So inside of our flow, I want this pre-populated. I want these as the default value when we go into the actual flow. 
And we can kind of get a little preview of what this is going to look like by clicking our button here that we've set up, right? If I want to update that movie, you can see now that the movie I put in and the year it was released is already there. It's a default value because that's what exists already on the account. So we have those there. But what happens if, you know, this account no longer has that as their favorite movie? You want to update that to something else. Well, in this user experience, it's pretty straightforward, right? Like you could just update it to whatever you want. Fast, and furious. I don't know when that came out. And hit next here. Um, it's obviously going to update and that just ran our flow and I'll break down what that flow is next in our business case. But what happened in there is we assigned a new value, um, to one of our variables in the flow. It was saying, Hey, your favorite movie is set to monsters Inc. And the year released was set to 2001. And in our flow, we actually did not, um, create a new variable and house new information. We actually used an assignment to say, hey, override that information and whatever it is that they put in on this screen that pops up, use that information and assign it as the new value on the account. So that's kind of where our headspace is with this and how that's going to work. Um, I recorded this before. And I was realizing that was kind of hard to explain uh, myself, like while I was recording this, of how that would make sense. So hopefully showing you a little bit about the flow before we actually dive into it this time helps you out. Um, so that's kind of where our framework is. So in this case, right, we have an account management team needs to be able to update the account with the client's favorite movie when needed create a solution that will allow the account management team to do this. So as we just explained, we're obviously creating a flow. We're going to need an assignment in there to be able to update new values if we choose to update them. Um, and that's kind of what our criteria is, right? Is to invoke that flow if and when we have to update that new movie and the year released. So in this specific design, for an assignment element, you can use these in a lot of different ways, but since these videos are basically set up to um, just go over our basic use case scenario in a very fundamental way to understand it, we're gonna use a screen flow because in a lot of these cases, you would use an assignment to do some type of um, update and assign a new value based upon new information. So screen flow works because a screen pops up literally and a user updates the information and then we use that information throughout the flow and then update you know whatever object and in this case it's it's obviously the account object that we're updating so we're going to go ahead and use a screen flow this time um, we're going to want to break it down by getting the records of our account popping up a screen to allow the user to input the information and then assigning those new values and updating the account. All right, cool. So we talked a lot about this, the framework, what it is, our definition. We have a good idea of what we're trying to do in this video. So let's jump over to our flow and let's take a look at what we have here. So we have our screen flow starting and the very first thing that we wanna do is get the account records. We want to get the information that already exists on the account so we know what their favorite movie is when we click that button update movie right so the very first thing that I did here is I grabbed our um, update records or sorry get records element I'm looking at the account I'm looking at the account ID equaling the record ID which is starting off our flow and then we're gonna store it inside of one of our variables a record variable um, for the account. I just named this specific record account because obviously that's what we're storing this on. So we're grabbing the favorite movie field as well as the released year, the year released field. So we're gonna grab those two things and then we can pre-populate it in our next field. So this one's 
pretty cut and dry of like how you're how you're grabbing this. Basically, just worried about grabbing the account favorite movie and the account year released. So let's connect this one, number one, and then number two is going to be our screen here. So our screen pops up, and uh, we have some display text asking, um, you know, what is your favorite movie, and then uh, an area for us to input that favorite movie as well as the year that it was released in. And as you're seeing here, I'm pre-populating that with the account favorite movie that we just grabbed and the year released on the account as well. So we're gonna pre-populate this information just in case they already have a favorite movie and we wanna leave it as that. If their favorite movie happens to be the same and we just need to update the year released or vice versa, uh, we want to leave them the option of saying, hey, this is currently on your account. You may not need to update this. Um, you can go ahead and move forward with it without actually changing that text. So that's kind of our first screen that we're going to have pop up. And you guys saw me run through that. Uh, so nothing, once again, really crazy going on here. And after our screen, this is where we're actually going to get into the assignment, um, which is the entire video, right? This is what we wanted to go over. So if we jump into our assignment, this is what it looks like. And I'll delete these and type them back out. But basically what we're looking at is, okay, if they update that favorite movie and if they update that year released, where are we updating that? Where are we making that type of update? Do I need to you know, push that over into a new variable? Is there somewhere else that I got to store that decision? Um, or where am I going to store those updated values? And this assignment is going to allow us to do that. So jumping back over here to our get records, we have um, on our record variable, we have a variable storing the favorite movie and we have a variable storing our year released. That is the same thing over here. So we're saying, if I delete this, we're looking for the variable. Okay, we want you to update or we want you to assign the new value that was input from the screen part, the screen that pops up, that value that they put in there in that text box, we want you to update this variable that originally had Monsters, Inc. with Fast and Furious. Does that make sense? So if I look at this account, right, and I type in favorite movie, well, this already has something in it before I got to this assignment, right? Because we already told it to put, hey, whatever you found in there, put um, that value into this variable and store it. Um, I'm like thinking out loud, and I just want to make sure that this makes sense to you guys. So let's look at this one more time. We have Fast and Furious as the movie and the year released as 2006. So inside of that, if I click our update movie button, okay, well, it popped it up because it found it, right? So inside of here in our get records, we said go and find whatever value is in our favorite movie and whatever value is in our year released. And then on screen one, populate that inside of these fields for us so we know which one it is. And that's what that just did. We have Fast and Furious, as you can see behind here, and 2006. And so when we ran that, it populated it, Fast and Furious and 2006. So what I'm trying to get around to helping you understand here is this variable that we just stored those values in on our get records right here, this is Fast and Furious, and this is 2006. That's what we're storing in there right now. So the assignment is basically saying, okay, uh, you know, with this new value that we're finding, which we want to grab our favorite movie, whoops, from the screen component, so whatever value they put in that text, we want you to put it inside of this variable and override the information that is there. That's what the assignment's doing. It's overriding that information. Or in other words, it's assigning new information to this variable. So that's what we're asking it to do. We're saying, 
hey, we don't care that Fast and Furious is in this variable right here. We want you to take the screen component, whatever it is that the user puts in on the screen, and put it inside of this variable and store it. So same thing over here, right? We go to our, our variable, we go to our year released, which is 2006 currently. And we're saying, instead of storing 2006, we want you to store whatever it is that the user puts in on the screen, whatever value they put in that text box, store it inside this variable. Um, and that's what it does. So that's kind of the assignment element. It's, um, I think just the best way that makes sense to me is it's, it's either overriding information like you, you can think of it that way, or it's assigning a new value to that variable. So override it or assign a new, uh, new value, sorry, to that variable. Obviously, after we assign a new um, value, we want the update to occur. So from here, we're just going into the account, um, grabbing the account object, and we're saying, hey, update the favorite movie with the same variable that we started out with, which is the favorite movie on the, on the account. Same thing over here. Um, go ahead and go in here and update it with our favorite or with our um, year released. So we'll do the same thing. We'll go to the account and then we'll go to year released. Right? Done. Perfect. And we'll just double check. This is going into year released. This one is going into favorite movie. And so when we update it, we want it to do the same thing. The value that's stored in here, update this field. The value that's stored in here, update this field. And then once we save this, right, it should do that for us. So let's activate. And um, we're not getting into it, obviously, here. But yeah, I have that flow hooked up to a, a button here on our account. And when I click that, Okay, cool. That pops up fast and furious. And if we want to change that back to Monsters Inc. It updates and then it updated our account with the correct value. So that way we know that it worked. And the same is true in case I don't want to do that. If I just want to leave year released as 2001 and change this back to fast and furious, the same thing will happen. It still allows 2001 to be there because even though that update just happened, um, 2001 was still stored in that variable that's being updated. Um, so that's how assignments work.